Hi, Terry. Hi, Tim. How you doing? Mm. Not seeing you for ages. No. So, Dot to Dot Festival, who are you going to see? I quite like the name of uh, a band called Diet Sig. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I think I'd, I'd like to go and see them. How about you? Picks and Cloves oh, and really, right. Arden, but I haven't heard of any of them. <laughs> I have trouble listening to new music because I can't access new music. I can, but I don't, and it's laziness. Right. Normally, people tell me about stuff uh, and, you know, say, oh, I reckon you, you might like this, and, you know, if, if they know me well enough, I will, and if they don't know me at all, then, you know, I'll probably just, like, yeah. never speak to them again. <laughs> it's like access to it is my biggest problem because at 16, 17, I was going out yeah. and everybody was going out it couldn't come to you, yeah. but now it comes to you. Because I'm still a massive music fan, yeah. I want to see scenes, I want to see kids. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. Maybe they do have a voice and maybe they do, maybe they are angry and I just don't see it because I, I don't see it. I think it's, uh, quite, it's, it's a lot more positive now than it, than it was 10 years ago, I think. The way you broke out in the sort of late 70s, was it out of uh, absolute desperation? But that's all it was. And that's purely down, really, to the Sex Pistols and The Clash, yeah. doing that one tour around the country and opening up so many eyes. So what was that, 76? Yeah. And you were 79? Yeah. 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 yeah, we spent two or three years after seeing them working ourselves out. But it's, they were the um, catalyst, really, for it, for it all. But do you think you're, you're um, looked at as like a band who were part of that whole Manchester thing? Yeah, I think so, yeah. I, I, I thought think, you were a bit out of that. Definitely, definitely were, but there was something going on. There was something going on, and for me, it started at the Hacienda and following New Order around. So, and to me, mm. New Order were always the first, um, as what people were calling, scally bands, mm. right? And I just mm. thought they were against the grain, and, and uh, obviously they had Tony Wilson, who was doing mm. a lot of the talking for them, and, and, and I was growing up as um, one of Wilson's children, I think, because mm, uh, mm. I was watching him on the telly and he was introducing all the new band mm. series. I remember seeing Happy Mondays. They, they were rehearsing next to us in Chorlton. They were great, they were brilliant. Yeah. And I remember they, they, they nicked all the stuff out of our dressing room and so they passed all the tests, really. It was yeah. quite good. <laughs> but it's, style is, is, is an odd thing, because as, as the specials, we played for two years being sort of individual and no one, in, nobody was like interested in what we were doing. We couldn't get finance, we couldn't get anything. And then we, we played in Crawley and it was full of reborn skinheads who'd come to see Sham 69. Oh, yeah. It was like looking back at what we'd done and how we grew up with, you know, sisters and mods and skinheads and just going back to that. And then we'd, we created something new. I think people have seen it in the past as a uniform. I think uh, it's like when it becomes too much of a uniform, then it starts fading. And then it just gets dismantled and comes yeah. back and is reborn as something else. Yeah. I remember in the 80s and the Perry Boys in... I mean, they Manchester. certainly wore them different. Yeah, they did. I mean? They did. And, yeah. like, different haircuts. Everything. Like, the, the, yeah. a, like a wedge as opposed to yeah. a skinhead. Yeah. But, but I think uniform is, is all important in and, any, and you know, with music. It's that identity thing. And as a kid, that's what you're searching for, I think. It's good to kind of, like, find people that are yeah. kind of, like, yeah. quite you know, like-minded and, and then share, sharing ideas and that makes one idea even stronger, doesn't yeah. it? And, you know. and you do that and the way you do that with clothes and yeah. music and whatever, whatever else. I think times are better these days, though. Um, I think the fact that anybody can make a record isn't necessarily a good thing. No, not necessarily. No. Um, and bands sound better uh, sort of if they've got a bit of money spent on them, don't they? Yeah. Hair. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think people will always like to go out and see live music because of the way that we listen to stuff on computers now. It's like so, it's such a kind of like low volume, you mm. know, uh, mm. that, that, that I think the volume just like kills people when, you mm. know, or, you know, will really excites people when, when they go out and see a live band. And yeah, and you're going to see My Bloody Valentine and just the level that he's playing at. Mm. Who cares what it's digital? It's just, it's just loud. Yeah. It's loud. So loud and hair gel rather than digital and analog. And really. definitely MBV. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Who, yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm off to uh, watch some bands. Okay, mate. Well, 
I'll see you in a little bit. Yeah. And uh, good to talk to you. Yes. <laughs>